Well, good afternoon. I want to welcome everyone to today's webinar, Movement Considerations Across the Ages. My name is Jim Cole, and I'm a physical therapist and the clinical director uh, here at Ortho SC in the Carolina Forest uh, campus. Um, today's webinar is actually a follow-up uh, of a webinar that we did a few months ago that was entitled Activity Considerations uh, Across the Ages. At that time, we looked at the physical activity guidelines uh, that have been developed by the US Department of Health and Human Services. And we looked at how we compared to the recommended activity levels that were created for three distinct age groups. We talked about some of the obstacles and the challenges uh, in our current society uh, that has tended to remove physical activity from our uh, and we discussed some strategies and some suggestions to restore that movement. Well, I received some good feedback following uh, that webinar. Uh, people felt that the education was good, the information was well received, but many of them wanted more specifics. The, the question was basically, well, what exercises can I start with? Where might it, what might be a good starting? Well, today I hope to answer that for you a little bit. Um, I do want to go back a little bit because we're talking about movement and activity, not necessarily exercise. So I'm gonna jump back and forth on that. Um, the three age groups that we're gonna look at again today are children and adolescents. So that ranges from six to 17 years old. Um, what the US Department of Health and Human Services defined as adults and then older adults. So they didn't use a, an age of when that transition happens. Um, we are gonna use 50, that's what we used last time, because we really start to see a significant decline in someone's balance and balance reactions that start at about that time. Um, so we came, kept coming to this question, what are some specific exercises that I can do? So I thought, well, hey, this is a great uh, opportunity for another webinar. It kind of follows the, the classical physical therapy learning model that you spend a lot of time in, in lecture and then you, you go to movement lab. And so we're gonna consider that our, our lecture portion and today our, our movement lab. But before we jump right into the movement lab, I do think it's important uh, that we review a few things to provide context uh, and a brief introduction. Regular physical activity is one of the most important actions that people of all ages can take to improve their health. And we, we're gonna stay here, we need, we need this to stick. It's not regular physical exercise. It's not a bout of an exercises that range for a certain amount of time at a certain intensity level, at a certain frequency. All of that is good and, and we need that, but we need to understand how much regular physical activity that we need and that we're just simply not getting it. So more than 80% of children and adolescents do not meet the recommended 60 minutes or more of moderate to vigorous daily physical activity. So that's the six to 17 year old age group. More than 80% of adults do not meet the recommended guidelines of at least 150 minutes per week of moderate intensity aerobic activity. So on both of those guidelines, again, it's full activity throughout the day. So in that children and adolescents, some of the things that we've lost that we want to restore is that dynamic, unstructured, child-led activities. It could be the simple things, running, jumping, skipping, playing capture the flag, ball sports, but it doesn't always have to be ball sports that are adult-led, pickup games in the neighborhood, all great stuff um, for children. For the adults, we did talk about, and I think we wanna to review today, that some of the simple things of uh, parking the car a little bit further from where you work, um, choosing stairs instead of the ele elevators when you have those options, um, getting just a little more activity throughout your day to meet this 150 minutes per week. Certainly in adults, we want exercise, right? And, and it's fine, whether it's at the gym or at home, um, we're going to look at some of that today and, and resistance exercises. We certainly want that. In the older adult, we want that multi-component exercise. We want the things that are weight-bearing. We want strengthening. And definitely, we want some promotion uh, for some balance as, as we get older in that category. Well, it's not just that we've become 
less active. We also sit a lot more. The average US adult sits six and a half hours per day. Um, and for children uh, ages 12 to 19, the average is eight hours a day. We currently in this country sit more than at any other time in history. Um, and it's not just that our work lives are more sedentary. It's not just that we've taken some amount of that activity out of school. Um, the Washington University School of Medicine did a study and they reported in 2003 that 29% of adults said that they used the computer outside of work or school for at least one hour a day. So in 2003, it was 29%. In 2016, that number was at 50%. And so we have to just understand that it's not just our work life or our school life, um, it, it's our home life also. Um, so while the question was, again, what are some exercises we can do? I hope we can see from this that adding exercise onto this amount of inactivity would be like adding nutritional supplements to a diet that doesn't have the very basics of nutrition. And so we need, we need to do more. We want to exercise, yes, but we need to restore our activity. So we need to, real simple, right? We need to sit less and move more. Engaging in regular physical activity over months and years can produce many long-term health benefits. Positive health is associated with a capacity to enjoy life and to withstand challenges. It's not merely the absence of disease. When we look at inactivity, when we look at sitting, still today our medical model looks at this in context of disease. So when we looked at um, the activity considerations, we know that there are health risk factors when we're more inactive that have with them higher risks of things like heart disease, diabetes, obesity, and even some type of cancers. Um, there's been slogans that have been going around for years now, and, and they're good. And they kind of get us to think that sitting is the new smoking. Well, that slogan came out because sitting of too great of a time has some risk factors like smoking for heart disease. Right? There's even a slogan a little more recently of the sitting disease and all the negative health consequences that come with that. But they're all looking at, tend to look at disease. They all tend to look at lifespan. Lifespan, the number of years that someone lives. What we wanna look at today and consider how this inactivity affects our health span the life of the years that we live. And I think that's something that's really important, okay? You may not have those disease factors, but you, when you come in for physical therapy and you may have a rotator cuff tendonitis, if you have a very poor posture, if you have weight where you shouldn't have it, if you have a lot of structural weakness, your rehab potential for that rotator cuff problem is gonna be different than someone that doesn't have. We want to we want to do this from a, a health span um, model and, and not just a uh, lifespan. Um, one thing that I think is very interesting and I, and I think it fits here and, and so um, I would have folks that are interested in this to look this up. Um, you could simply look it up. It's a demographic study that's done with people groups across the world. And they've come up with five different people groups that really seem to have both of what we're talking about, the greatest lifespan and the greatest health span. Um, interestingly, it's, it's not a lot. They've come up with five distinct groups throughout the world of people that live the longest and live the longest with the greatest activity level. Uh, we do have one in the United States, Loma Linda, California, um, but then they're, they're pretty well dispersed throughout the world. Uh, Sardinia, Italy is one. Okinawa, Japan is one. There's a community in Greece and there's a community uh, in Costa Rica. Now, they've looked at common denominators 
among these groups? What do they do that is distinctive to them that maybe affects these type of things? And so they've come up with the power nine. And of course, one of them that we're gonna look at is natural movements. They live in environments that cause them to move without being consciously aware of it. They don't pump iron, they don't run marathons, and they don't go to air conditioning gyms. Not that any of those things are bad and many of us should probably do more of it, but their daily life incorporates movement. They do tend to do things like garden and they don't have mechanical conveniences for things like housework and yard work. I think uh, too often uh, we all um, allow things like that to slip away and we don't even realize. It. So currently in the United States, about 40% of Americans contract out the lawn service. A growing, growing business, um, especially here at the Grand Strand is car washes. And just think, those are two very simple things that we contract out all the time. And the car washes that are being built, I can remember when, when you took a car to the car wash and you had kind of a brush hanging and a wand hanging and you put in six corners and it was like NASCAR pit crew. I mean, you were getting some exercise. If you were lucky, your time ran out and you didn't have suds all over your car, but you were working at it, right? Nowadays you sit in your car and it's like an amusement park with lights, and different colored soaps and all that. And you come out to the other side and your car is everything but windproof. But we need to realize these things that slip and erode away our, our physical activity. And so oftentimes, things that we think as a time-saving device, I want us to more consider a movement-sparing device. So developing and maintaining strength, flexibility, and balance are key components for injury prevention and maintaining an active and independent lifestyle across all the ages. That's what we're gonna, that's what we're gonna look at. Um, so now we're gonna jump into the movement lab. Part. We've come up with seven different movement patterns um, that we're gonna look at. And, and I think these movement patterns, this is not an exhaustive movement program. I'm not trying to, um, although the question was what exercises can I do? And I think these are fitting. I do think that there's movement patterns that we should develop as children and adolescents and found the formation and foundation of good skilled movement. And then we should look to improve those patterns as our early adults. Then we definitely need to seek to maintain those patterns as older adults. So this is my son, Andrew. He's 11. He's a perfect model for this early uh, group, uh, child and adolescence. And so we're gonna start with him. And then depending on the day, I feel sometimes more like the adult category or the older adult category. Um, so I'm gonna pinch hit for both of those. All right, so we're starting with the squat. So a uh, lot of decent things to see here. So if we start at the ankles, um, Andrew has a slight toe out, but it's, it's very natural. He's got both uh, the ball of his foot and the heel of his foot on the ground. Um, so that's really good. One thing that you'll notice that kind of jumped out at me afterwards that I really didn't realize at first until we went through it was you see a lot more of his right knee and thigh than you do of his left. So he's really leaning to the left, okay? So this could be that he has, could have a, a limitation in the ankle, but if he had that, it probably wouldn't be still flat, but it certainly could be that he's his knee or his hip, but he's avoiding something. What we had him, just with some simple cues, kind of clean that up a little bit. Um, and it was fine. And so there was nothing there. Um, but those are the types of things that we want to look at. But he has a good upright posture. A point that I want to make for you now, I took a fair amount of time to look at what I thought was safe movement patterns that are part of everyday life, right? Andrew needs to do this. This is the ready position for most of his sport activity. This isn't too far from an activity that people need to just simply pick up a bag of groceries off the floor. Nevertheless, if you're going through these exercises and you're really well deviated from some of the things we're gonna look at today, or they cause you pain, um, or you can just tell there's something's not off on this, 
Um, I don't just ask that you not do the exercise. You know, we have four different campuses, here, right? We have, we have a campus in Conway, we have Carolina Forest, Merle's Inlet, and a new location in Market, in Market Conway. Um, this type of thing, these are basic fundamental movements. If you have a hard time with them, you can even reach out today. Lisa Sanders is, is on the webinar and write down your information, but um, I want to help you. That's the whole idea of this. And so if you're having glitches, we can probably clean them up really. All right, so the side view, this is of interest uh, to me. So let's look at this first in the context of someone that's 11. We still see a nice flat foot. So we want equal weight distribution from the ball of his foot to the heel of his foot. And he does that pretty well. He's got a nice bend in his knee and his knee is not excessively protruding over his foot. So there's no real problem there. Um, we saw in the picture looking for the front, his knees do track kind of outside his big toe and, and we do like that. We see a good posterior weight shift here. So we got nice hip mo motion where his hips are going backwards, but we see a pretty forward lean here, right? And that's very common in, in someone like Andrew's age group because we would want this to be a more erect uh, angle of his spine. And that takes two things. That takes decent thoracic mobility in this region, kind of right between your shoulder blades, and it takes good core stabilization, right? So if I have this curve going into flexion and I have this curve going more into extension, there's no way to make that happen other than some good core control. So it's normal that someone at Andrew's age that's very active in sports would have that. And so we just at least have to know that it's there and we wanna develop that and we wanna see it change over time. If we don't recognize this in this age group and we start to add skill development on top of physical development that is not there, we can have a wide range of injuries that occur that could be way away from the point of dysfunction, right? So if he doesn't have good core control and he's going to some conditioning program, flipping tractor tires in someone's backyard, that could be a problem, right? And, and that does happen. We really are moving more adult kind of based exercise and conditioning activities onto some of our youth when they may not be prepared. So here's the picture that we saw. So in the adult, um, what we want to do is we want to see if we can get a little bit more erect, right? And, and have some of that core control. Um, so this isn't perfect, but this is a drill that is often used in therapy clinics and, and even home. You can position yourself about a foot width away from a door and hold something like a dowel in your hand. And the idea is you go down into a squat with your feet flat and um, your knees tracking, not over your toes. You love to see your hips lower than your, than your knees in this position and as upright as you can. So if that stick doesn't touch that door jam, I'm doing pretty decent. A um, little bit of shoulder tightness. It'd be better if you could see my ear right here, right? So there could be a, some shoulder uh, mobility problem. There could be some lat tightness in there. Now this is in... This is in the adult, right? So if Andrew's the six to 17 year old, you know, this is a pattern that we're trying to improve before that 50 range. And obviously there's someone's biological age and physiological age can differ a lot, but that's a, where we're looking to improve that pattern. The other thing we can do is we can add a resistance band to it, right? So this is a, a great exercise and way to do this. The band is looped through the feet and it's through your hands, you start in a very upright posture. Um, what you can't really appreciate here is, I'm trying to take that band with my hands and actually spread my arms apart, okay? And so really trying to engage my scapular muscles um, and my postural stabilizers here. And then as we go down to try to keep those hands behind my head and to maintain a pretty good vertical alignment. Um, decent, a uh, little sloppy down here. So you, my feet kind of splay out. Um, I think my knees still are in a decent position in line with or not inside my feet. Um, so I think that's decent, but definitely losing it a little bit here. And it looks to me like my weight is on the inside of my foot. Um, so just knowing this subject pretty well, uh, my guess, 
is that this is from an ankle mobility problem, okay? So it's a good exercise. Um, that's probably not gonna withstand time real well. So what I would probably do for someone in the clinic like this, I would put their heels um, maybe on a two by four or a weight or something like that, and then take away that ankle mobility restriction while I do a corrective exercise to fix it. And so that's what I was uh, kind of getting to. If you're going through these and you got glitches that you're trying to work around, that's not what these exercises are intended to do. So that would be good in kind of the adult population. So here's where I'm pinch hitting for the past 50, let's say. This is a great exercise and activity, um, the 30 second chair stand. So what you're gonna do here is your arms are across your torso so that you can't use them for momentum. And you're gonna stand up and sit down completely. And you're gonna do it as many times as you can in 30 seconds. So you start the timer and you go. If you are not in the chair, when that 30 seconds comes up, you don't count that repetition. So there's a lot here from strength, but there's also a significant amount of balance because to do this fast, I have to lean forward. I'm gonna get my head, my arms, and my trunk, my torso forward of my base of support, and then I'm gonna capture it and move back and forth. So there's a lot of anterior, posterior sway, great balance reaction. Well, they've, they've studied this a lot. So this would be below average scoring. So if you're in the age range of 60 to 64 for a man, and they do less than 14, that would be considered below average um, for ladies less than 12. Um, one thing that I think as I look through this, a couple of things jumped out to me. So if we jump down a couple and go into a 10 year different category, um, we can see that the number only decreases by 10. And so that's kind of what we're talking about. We're talking about developing patterns as youth, improving them as an adult, and maintaining them. I think this, this shows a pretty good expectation of, of maintenance. Um, again, there's huge balance reactions. Here. So anyone that is below average indicates a risk of fall for that age group. Here's another great mobility task um, that doubles both as a great movement um, and a little bit of a test, a little bit of a litmus test for you. So. Andrew, this is called the timed up and go. So Andrew is sitting in a chair with his back against the backrest. When I say go, he gets up. Now he is able to use his hands if he needed it, that would be fine. He is gonna walk as quickly, but as safely as he can to that orange circle, back to the chair, turn around and sit. The time stops when he's sitting again, right? So it kind of starts slow, but a lot of balance reactions. So your time in and out of the chair is largely dependent on, on strength, right? How quickly you can get in and out. But the balance reactions are so significant in this, right? He has to accelerate from here to that orange dot. Then he has to decelerate, turn, accelerate again, decelerate and turn. So balance, vestibular type of reactions. It is, it is great for that. So any older adult who takes greater than 12 seconds doing this test, is that a risk for falling? Okay. This is a great activity and one that just to start with and appreciate both the strength and balance reactions with, and then you know, seek to do it quicker over time. Start where you can. Um, so that was one of our seven, okay? The next one that's a great movement pattern to start in youth, to improve and to further develop is a split squat. So Andrew here, um, again, his foot's flat. That looks really good. His knee is really tracking in line with his foot. That looks good. Um, he's got a nice upright posture, right? We don't see anything really off right there. Um, so his, his overall posture right here looks pretty good. From the side, this back leg, if it was further back, that would be great, okay? Now, if he does that, that is decreasing his base of support and is going to further increase his core strength. And, and again, I'm not, uh, not knocking my model here because he does great, 
Um, but it wouldn't be expected for 11 that he would probably have the core stabilization to be much further. But his knee is tracking behind his foot. We all want to do that. That's great. He, he is pretty upright here. I like that. But if we really looked at his lumbar extension right there, we're going to uh, work on Andrew's core. We'll have to do a follow-up video. and It'll be much better, I promise you. Now, we can also strengthen this, right? So how would we look to improve this uh, once we're in the early adults? Well, again, we can add resistance data. And again, it's up top. It's doing great for our postural stabilizers of our shoulders. That resistance band is looped through both hands and through that front foot. We're still maintaining a good knee angle. We're trying to get, this is what we're trying to get. We're trying to get a nice hip extension angle while we keep our lumbar spine straight, okay? If you sit a lot for work, this is the exact opposite of the movement pattern that you work for probably too many hours a day, right? So it's not just your lower body that you get tend to get really tight in the front of your hips. So having this leg back really helps with that hip mobility. But you tend to get really weak in those posterior scapular muscles, and you tend to get really tight in the front of your shoulder girdle, right? You tend to lose a little bit. You get a little forward head posture. This is a great corrective exercise for people that sit a lot for work. Um, that band travels pretty well. You could probably get out of your workstation at work bang out a few of these uh, on some breaks. It would work pretty good. For the older adults, um, you know, I should probably have this not so far, um, but we can use a little bit of a balance aid, right? This is just a, a PVC pipe um, that would help uh, to keep the balance. It's in the opposite hand, right? So it's having a little bit more of that base of support that it's helping me to control here, but it could be a chair. It could be a kitchen countertop, okay? Find where you're successful and start there. This is a, a great mobility exercise that really um, we do want to do kind of across the lifespan. Single limb stance. Um, this one's really important. Um, so again, if we look big picture here, this looks pretty good. Um, Andrew's shoulders are level, his hips are level. I would like to see this leg a little bit to his, to his right, okay? His, his legs are not touching. You can see it there, they're not. Um, but for a lot of, especially athletic movement patterns, um, we don't want to be so closed down, right? We want to be able to have that hip um, out a little bit more and to control that pelvis a little bit better. But th this is good. Um, it's very good. This is great. So here he's standing. I mean, that, that's a great ear over the shoulder, shoulder over the hip, hip over the knee, knee slightly bent. So he's not just hanging out on his knee ligaments. He's using his quad. This is hard. Balancing on one leg is hard. Um, for children and adolescents, uh, you see this a lot on the ball field where um, they'll do kind of a stretch where they're doing a single knee to chest stretch. They're basically walking bringing their, their knee to their chest and hugging it. And they're getting great dynamic mobility when they do that. Um, I'm always surprised if we slow them down when they do that, so it becomes more of a balance and a core activity. Um, oftentimes, they do pretty poor. And, and when they do it quickly, um, they get a pretty good stretch. So they feel like they're doing real well. But those types of things can be great balance core stability exercises. So if you're less than five seconds on a single limb stance, um, that's a problem and it has a very significant risk for fall. Um, as we move across the, you know, the lifespan with this, I think this is something that we kind of neglect to do in ways that we don't often realize. Um, we start holding on for the dresser when we're simply putting our pants on, and we don't realize. Um, we don't really lift our leg to put on our shoe. We start wearing a lot of slides rather than lace up shoes. And just really simple things that we don't realize that when we're stepping over that curb stop in the parking lot at Walmart, we're holding on to the fender. Just little simple things. So this is something all throughout your day, you know, kind of get an idea of how you're doing with your, with your stability and your single limb stance. Um, if you can't do five seconds, or it's just really, it's so challenging that 
you're really wobbling, right? I mean, you need to be able to balance on one leg with some stability. You can go into a tandem stance. So in a tandem stance, um, the leg that is doing the most work, the leg that is most challenged is your rear leg. Um, so you would want to do this in both stances. If, and this is really challenging. So again, we want you to keep your shoulders level, your hips level, but we want stabilization. The back leg, you're really going to feel um, that ankle wobble. And uh, that's good. That's a great challenge. When you do a bicep curl, you expect that it's challenging your bicep. So don't be surprised um, and don't get discouraged when some of these balance exercises are really difficult. They, they are difficult. Um, but you could also go to kind of a semi-tandem where your feet are more staggered. So I would move that back leg up to like half the width there. And I could start with a semi-tandem. That's a great way to get a challenge. That rear leg, again, we're getting a nice stretch to that hip flexor. Um, so there's a lot going on there with life's activities. The push-up, okay? The push-up, whether it's the children or adolescents um, or in life, um, you'll see, I hope, uh, that this can be a great exercise. We want to develop it early. Simply holding the push-up position. This is a great exercise in and of itself. You can hold that position for time, uh, start where you're successful, make it challenging. Hence the muscles from basically your head to your toes and everything in between. It's great. Oftentimes this will be called a full plank, but, but getting control of that position. Andrew looks good. Um, we're a little bit flexed in here, or he has a tendency to flex in there. Um, so when he does the push up, uh, this is a, a common uh, push up that's done where that's called the pickup push up. So when you get to the bottom, he has to curl, control his descent. And then when he gets to the bottom, he picks his hands up. And that really helps him to get those shoulder blades back to really work some good thoracic extension and, and to avoid that flexed postural position when he's doing push-ups. So pick him up every time. It's okay that your body's on the floor. If you're controlling this, it makes it every bit as hard. So as we were to get a little bit older and move into adults, we want to maintain this posture, um, but it's probably a better idea that your arm stays in line with your torso and that we don't see your elbows going higher than your torso. Again, it depends on the purpose of you're doing the movement for, but if we're just talking about, you know, well body health, um, I, I would suggest um, for your shoulder health, maintain it all the way down, maintain it. Okay. This is one of those lifelong activities. We need to be able to move things away from us, right? And it could be simple things. It could be grocery cart type. We need to move loads and be, care and be comfortable moving loads away. So start with a wall, no problem. Engage your core, just like um, Andrew had done in the previous picture. Come down and think like you're really pushing that wall away from you. That doesn't provide you a challenge, go a little bit lower. Um, you can use something like uh, your kitchen countertop. Staircases work great if you really want to start kind of where you can and then work your way um, down the stairs a little bit more at a time. And get over the whole, a guy can't do them on their knees type of thing. Um, it's a great exercise. Get on your hands, get on your knees. If you can't use a feet, that's a long lever arm, right? So spare your shoulders. You'll get a great core exercise. You know, you're in the comfort of your own home. Maybe you don't bust out at the gym doing them that way, but in your own home, bang out some on your knees. Dying bug. So now we're moving to the floor um, and we want to work on our core stabilization. So this is a great core activity. And although Andrew is lying down, it certainly does look like the functional natural movement pattern of walking, or at least it um, contains a lot of those things, doesn't it? Um, so he has his abdominals tight. He's keeping his back flat to the floor. His left arm is going overhead while simultaneously his right arm and leg are going down to the floor. So he wants to get pretty low here. He doesn't necessarily have to touch, so he's good, but he wants to get pretty low. And it's dependent on his ability to back flat. So a lot of times in the clinic, we have a little device that's inflatable and we'll actually put it under there and monitor 
um, is that back moving or not? Um, because it can often be moving a lot before the eye can see it. So don't worry so much when you're starting this on how close that foot gets to the floor. Right? Look to control your core, keep your back flat. A progression of that would be all four limbs off the ground. Okay. Only one leg is extending at a time. So this is important here. So one of his legs is at a greater than 90 degree angle. If he allowed this leg to start drifting and both legs are moving in this area, very few people are gonna have uh, the core stabilization to do that. So then you're doing it with an unprotected lumbar spine um, and your hip flexors are gonna kind of be overactive when you do it. Um, and so sometimes the benefits of increasing the intensity of an exercise can kind of offset um, you know, kind of like why you're doing it in the first place. Uh, if that wasn't challenging enough, if he picks his 10 pound head an inch off the floor, he's going to add a greater load to his core. We don't want to flex it, right? We're trying to keep a neutral spine. He's doing a great job of that. But lifting that up and adding that load would be a great way um, to progress that. Okay, so the exercise you just did um, it did work your core a lot, but there's a lot of hip flexor activity, right? They get, and we right now, because we sit so much, we have a problem with our hip flexors becoming really, really tight. When our hip flexors become tight, we tend to get a lot of glute weakness. So the bridge done after that exercise um, is often a nice way to do that. Um, this is sometimes nicknamed the glute bridge because you're on your heels. Uh, we all have a tendency when our feet are flat, we push a little bit more through the ball of our foot. And so we get halfway through the movement with our calf muscles. So when you're on your heels, and you disadvantage your calf. You naturally have to use more hamstrings and more glutes. And what you're really looking to accomplish here is a fairly straight line between your shoulder, hip and knee without arching your back. Okay, so you're thinking your, your belly's tight, your butt's tight, you're trying to get that straight line. Go as high as you can, but do not arch your back. Here, here's an, uh, another excellent movement pattern um, that a lot of times if you started on all fours and all you did was lift your arm, I mean, even that, when you have to weight shift to your other hand, there's a lot of stabilizing exercises, uh, stabilizing muscles, I'm sorry, uh, that really have to kick in. So his right scapular area of his shoulder is stabilizing him. Um, he has thoracic and lumbar muscles that are stabilizing him. In this picture, he's reaching his left arm forward as his right leg goes back. And he's as still as can be. A good bird dog doesn't move all over the place. The nickname bird dog is as still as you can be. So he's trying to hold it for 10 seconds and then he comes down he repeats the same pattern. You could do it either way, um, but he's repeating the same pattern for five repetitions on that side, and then he's gonna switch to the other side. But like I said, you can start with just your arm, and then you can start with just your leg, and then do opposites. Here's the key right here. We want his back to be flat, and this is gonna be different in, every, in everybody. So if you took a yardstick, you got on your hands and knees, and you were in just kind of a neutral pelvis position, where is your spine most neutral? Well, if we laid a yardstick across here, some people are going to have an inch of natural space based on their lumbar curve, and some people might have four inches. And so when you do this exercise, we don't want to see that curve increase. Okay? So Andrew's really doing a good job here. I think he's probably got a little bit more extension. Um, we're going to train that out of him. But for uh, an 11-year-old, um, one part that I want to look at, or at least have you consider, these exercises, these last three exercises we looked at, I think there's a definite benefit of the act of getting on and off the floor. So we got down in the first exercise, that dying bug, you got down and you were on your back. And then you did your bridge. And now you get on all fours and now you have to get to standing. We do not engage the ground. We don't engage much more than uh, lower than an 18 inch chair too early in life. 
Um, and some of these people that we've studied in other cultures that still do those types of things, their fall risk is much less than the U.S. fall risk right now. Um, so you have to be careful. Maybe you need to get on and off the floor with a coffee table that's next to you. Um, maybe you can't. And if you can't get on and off the floor, really, I mean, that's, that's, uh, that's a reason uh, for reaching out to us um, for some physical therapy. But the act of getting on and off the floor, turning from your back to your stomach in this position, great balance and vestibular reactions. Um, you can even make sure that you get down one way and up a different way. You could vary it each and every time. Um, there's some, some stuff there. That's a good, good thing. Um, so we do have a little, we do have uh, questions that you can post. So um, if you do have questions, um, certainly we would like uh, you to reach out with those. Um, but what I hope you get out of today, and although there was a stimulus for me to do this by that question, what are some exercises I can do to get started with? And I did seek to provide that. I'm thankful for the question. It's movement. We, we can't add exercise to inactivity. And that inactivity comes with it, a lot of musculoskeletal dysfunction. We certainly can't just add exercise on top of dysfunction. So what I want to do is create more of an awareness of, of, of for all of us today is it's the lack of movement. Um, that's associated with a host of health problems. And it's certainly associated with things that don't make the disease category, but do affect um, the livelihood and the life of our youth. So um, good question. Um, so I just want to hit this one because um, I'm so glad someone asked this. Um, if I need some of these exercises to be taught to me, as questions just come in, can I schedule an appointment with you or do I need to see my doctor first? So that is really dependent on your insurance carrier, okay? Most times than, than not, they do. Um, so that is really um, the good thing. I will tell you this, um, I'm not looking to, to take visits away from anybody, but I'm certainly not looking to put together obstacles and barriers. Um, if, if you reached out um, to the ortho SC portal or you called for an appointment, um, we would, uh, the therapy staff would do our due diligence to make sure that you met the criteria uh, of your insurance company. Many times an evaluation for something like this um, would be good. We are physical therapists. And with that, you need to have a medical necessity need for your insurance to pay for that. We're not personal trainers and there's nothing against that, but there is some criteria. So that's a great question. Um, my um, suggestion to you would be to reach out to your doctor first uh, or else we're gonna have obstacles with uh, insurance payment for it for you. We don't want that. Um, and yes, if you left your information on, uh, actually there's no one that's on here right now that, that I think that is anonymous. It's just the way the world works right now. Um, so this, uh, the question was, can I leave my information and someone will call me to set an appointment? Yes. If you do that, please do that. Um, yes, somebody will. Okay. Um, some, some great questions. Um, in the timed up and go, how far was the dot on the floor from the chair? Uh, 10 feet. And um, if, you, if you were to Google timed up and go, you would get a, a lot of uh, different information. It, it's a great um, movement pattern to do, um, but it is uh, a 10 foot distance. Um, ah, that, more than one person. So I obviously didn't state that one well. I'm glad you've asked that. Um, can I get a printout of these exercises? Um, I would try this for the person, uh, I have your name there, but I would try this. Um, leave your um, email address just you can do kind of a QA, and a um, and I would be glad to send them to you. Uh, I think that um, is great. So I'd be glad. Um, can you share your PowerPoint uh, slides of the different exercises? Um, I don't know. Uh, you, you have no idea of the IT help that I received um, to, to have this happen today, um, but I will tell you the same type of thing um, for Miss Diane. If you leave us your uh, email information, I will print them out. It's gonna be a little bit different format, but I would be glad to send them to you. Uh, and anyone else that's on here, um, if you'd like that, it would be my, my pleasure to do that. Um, 
Okay, so here, and, and so here's one right here. This is a great question. Um, someone that has had uh, some knee surgery, uh, both knees have, have had surgery on it. So uh, getting on, on my knees is nearly impossible. Um, getting up off the floor is extremely difficult. Um, any exercises that avoid knees on the floor? Absolutely. Um, and so on the bridge exercise, definitely the bridge exercise, the what's called the dying bug exercise, and even the bird dog, you could do all of them on a bed, on a mattress, okay? Now, here's what's going to happen. When you do the bridge exercise, you're going to feel like you're going nowhere, and you are going to decrease your mobility. Your hips are not going to go as high. But when your feet push into that mattress, the muscles on the posterior chain, your backside, are going to be firing. And so I still think it could be in a very effective movement pattern, even though you're not on the floor. Um, and I think that's a great question. Same thing with the dying bug. Do that laying on uh, a bed. I'm glad you asked that. Uh, the bridge, definitely. The bird dog um, is probably a little bit harder because if your mattress is really soft, um, then um, from a balance perspective, it's going to be pretty hard. Um, and uh, yes, uh, this, this particular webinar and all these slides um, is going to be uploaded on the OrthoSC website um, just in a couple of days. So if you get on uh, the OrthoSC website and you can go to patient resources uh, and video library, um, you can get this entire presentation. Okay, I'm just looking up. So we got some people sending um, their emails. Uh, if you send your email, because I told you I would, I'm still going to send you these exercises. I'm not going to make you um, go to the uh, website, but please, please do that. Are you easy to schedule with? Um, like I said, we have, uh, and the number is changing all the time. I should know this better th than I do. Um, but of our four campuses, um, we have. 11 physical therapists. Uh, we, we have a, a clinical staff of almost 20 physical therapists and physical therapy assistants. Um, so just opening the market common um, location, if we think of the Grand Strand, Conway, Merle's Inlet, and then in between market commons and Carolina Forest, um, that, that's why we're doing this. The market commons one just opened at the end of December. Got a, a great new location there. Um, so we want availability to you all and we want to reach out with webinars, webinars to give you information, um, to encourage and to equip you. But we also, if you need services, that's what we're here for too. Um, the Market Common office is open, open and running full steam. Question, uh, December 29th. Um, and so that is up and running and doing very well. Great location, right at the very uh, start of Farrell Parkway near the... Um, Name to this plaza, but business name. Um, right off of 17 um, near your neighborhood Walmart. Okay. I think I'm just making sure I don't, these were great questions and there were things uh, that I didn't think of. So I just want to make sure I'm just scrolling through a few of them just to make sure I get everybody because I do appreciate them. Uh, get the emails we got there. Um, but it looks like. Um, all the questions are answered. So let me get back. So here, gradually increasing our amount of movement throughout our daily activities can have a large impact on our health and well-being. If, if we really want to think about this, if we really can think of a shift in our mindset, that it's okay that all your bowls, like some of them are hard to reach in the back of cabinets that are seven feet or seven inches off the floor, like that's okay. That's in fact, I think that that's great. I think we're almost making things too convenient. Um, but think about how you can move and move and move purposely, you know, um, when we walk, you know, to walk with, you know, our head stacked over uh, of our shoulders and to walk with some purpose. Um, walking and movement, um, we talked about this natural movement from the blue zones, um, we shouldn't be conscious of it all the time. Um, but we can, in our household, 
and, and in our lives, um, there's so much more movement that's available um, to us. In, 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 um, go back to the questions that I just saw a couple. Um, Is balance, strength, or flexibility more important for those 60 plus, or are they equal? Um, I'm smiling right here because now I have, I said it, you are not anonymous, but, but now I'm starting to understand where this one's coming from. Um, that, that's, a, that's, a great, that's a great question. Um, I have a little bit of a slant on this, I think. Um, I think we would see more adverse effects on our lifespan from strength um, in that question. Okay? Now, we are not divided up this way, right? So um, let's just say we take a movement skill like throwing a ball. If I can't get my arm back to a certain amount and create some flexibility in my muscle, I'm not gonna throw the ball very good. I don't have strength and power to be able to do that from my foot through my core to my arm. I'm not gonna throw the ball very good. If I have a, a limited single limb stance or I can't weight shift very much, I'm not gonna throw the ball very well, okay? Um, but a lot of times, um, we lose strength. You know, if you, if you think of how we age, we're losing muscle mass, we're losing strength um, in a terrible way. And, and one of the things that I would hope to do from these movement patterns, we want to do movements, and, and, and I hope you can appreciate from these exercises, that do all three, right? So if you're sitting and standing from an 18 inch chair and you're going at it for 30 seconds, um, to get to the top of that requires some flexibility from your hips. It certainly requires some balance. Um, so I would not neglect any one of these areas, um, but I think we see a lot of falls that get attributed to balance that when that person was stepping off a six inch curb, they did not have the quad strength to lower their body safe. And that was a large part of their fall. So if we really looked at the mismatch in a lot of things like falls, it is many times a mismatch. Of but um, boy, um, that's a great question. And one that if I had a cup of coffee with you, we'd be on the spot, um, I'm gonna say, uh, we need so much more strength development um, in, our, in our older years. And when you develop strength, you know, if we look at our, our, our muscle as the largest organ of our body and the hormones that are maintained and produced, there's so much um, of our well being that is from our skeletal muscle. Um, but do them in positions and activities that also stimulate balance and flexibility. That split squat exercise, perfect example. Of that. So um, I may have to have a conversation with that person. I love the question. Um, Sorry about the rant. So sit less, move more, and enjoy life. You know, thank you um, for everybody uh, here today. I hope this was valuable. Um, with those questions, it makes me uh, feel like we might already have the next follow-up webinar just based on your questions. So I appreciate your time uh, and your attention. Thank you very much.